welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is our own pianist in residence, Sam Page. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And we're especially happy to be welcoming back a past co-host, David Strickle, who was on the show for about a half a year at one point there. And uh, he's been visiting ever since then. And uh, David, uh, since the last time that you were on, uh, there, there have been changes as there usually are around here. We've been doing a lot of guesting lately uh, with some really interesting conversations. Uh, but one thing we haven't talked about in a long time because you haven't been on the show is Taya. So this is going to be another opportunity to bring Taya back into the conversation. In fact, Sam and I were just talking about Taya just before uh, you, you hooked in. Yeah, I was going to say there was a little while there when you were in uh, boot camp. It was like Taya every day on the show. It was every day. Yeah, yeah. And, and then <laughs> I got out of boot camp. Like, well, yeah, the, the Taya hour was over. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, we, we were just uh, talking about how important it is to stay on top of the practices, even when, uh, when when you leave boot camp or or when you go through any kind of transition in life, because it's so easy to slip. And so, and, and yeah. you know, the, the polarity happens, right? I mean, that's going to happen anyway. So the real question is, how are you handling it when, when it's coming along? And that's where the practices make such a big deal. But boy, it's so easy to just, just kind of put them well, aside. Like, I, oh my I God, talk, what happened? We talk about the matrix all the time now. And that's what the matrix is, is that that prevalent vibration for humanity that does draw you back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's sort of designed to, uh, to, to draw you back in. It's everywhere. It's in the news media. It's in social media. It's in uh, your mailbox every day. <laughs> it's in your email box every day. There's little things that, oh, fear, judgment, comparison. You're not doing life right. Something's wrong with you. This isn't the right experience. It's everywhere. I will say, though, that um, one of the benefits that come out of coming out of this end of the, of the boot camp after having gone through it is that I have a very different. It's an appreciation. It really is a different appreciation for all those those nasty little things you were just mentioning in the past, you know, yeah, they get to me. Now, now I laugh at them. Now, yeah, yeah. You got it. It's, like, <laughs> it's not about demonizing the matrix. It's appreciating it, but yeah. not being swept up in it. Yeah. 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 It's a whole new perspective. Very different. And, and it, it, it also is a little bit of a challenge sometimes when interacting with others, because <laughs> I, I find that if I'm not careful, I come off as flippant. Which I'm yeah. not intending to be. You know? Yeah, they think that you're cold or callous because, again, right. you're supposed to feed the matrix. And if you're not feeding the matrix, then you're evil or demonic or something's wrong with you. Or, you know, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you freaked out about X, Y, Z the way that I am? What's wrong with you? I, I've definitely uh, experienced that with people. And, you know, my, I'm very comfortable with it now. But when you're mm -hmm. early into the practice, it's, it's tricky socializing. Yeah. Because they, they people love to draw you into like a fear judgment narrative about things, and you're just not on that level uh, or that frequency, and they don't know what to do with you. And, and then there are some times where I'll just I'll, I'll dip my toe into the contrast. I'll say, you know, I'm I'm going to be a little judgmental right now, and I'll start to do it like this doesn't feel very good at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. you know, the perspective has changed so much that I don't even want to do it anymore. Yeah, well, you you realize you're actively lowering your vibration to yeah. to go there. And, yeah, and for us process. that are on the other side of it, there's very little that's worth lowering your vibration over. We know that attraction not, is all not, not that I'm unable to do it, by the way. I'm, I can be, I'm very good at lowering vibration if I really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot. Well, I've got years of experience. We're going to get you a t shirt, champion vibration lower. <laughs> Just don't wear it on the show. You'll be fine. I love it. Sounds like a new podcast oh, right there, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about all the hey, high hey, vibration. Let's go low. Let's, let's go low. How low can you politics go? And religion. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That sounds about. depressing as hell, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Um, something that uh, has been kind of an interesting theme on the podcast lately, uh, since the last time you were on the show, we've been having a lot of medical people on. Mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't by, by design. It's just, well, you know, it's vibrational. You start developing a vibration and you get more and more. And so we've had a lot of medical people interested in being on the show to talk about various ways. All of them have found a way to leave traditional medical practice, or at least to leave it in a, in a part way manner, which I find to be fascinating. And I'm kind of curious to know what your take is on it, because my take is essentially 
I mean, because there, there's a lot of negativity around the whole medical topic anyway, and and it tends to come out in a lot of different ways. I think that that medical personnel are saying they they may not know about the tire practice, they may not know about vibration, but they're saying to themselves, "I don't like this anymore. I got to do something else. I just got I got to make a shift of some kind." So yeah. even with even without having the, the kind of tools we have at our disposal, they're 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 making the shift, and it, it's fun to watch. So I, I'm curious, have you seen anything like that? Have you seen anything in medical circles where there's a change going on? Well, I think all of humanity is is sort of stepping out of the matrix. We're all doing it in our own way at our own pace, but we're all stepping out of the matrix. And I think that in Western medicine, it's so focused on fear. Mm. Take this pill or XYZ is going to happen. You know, oh, do yeah. this thing or else. Follow the and, protocol. Yeah, I think people are are just getting fed up with it and just just deciding that hey this is we're, we're we're getting wiser is what it is so we're questioning medicine we're questioning religion we're questioning everything so why would we not question everything that's part of the matrix is is really there to be examined and the interesting thing is that people on the other side of it if you question it you're wrong oh no i you know the whole <laughs> pandemic was that right oh yeah absolutely. i remember when it first hit uh, we had some friends over and it was just starting to be talked about. And I said, well, isn't it just kind of like a bad flu? Oh my God. You would have thought that you know, I murdered a puppy or something. Right. Right. People, no, it's not a flu. It's not a flu. Well, now they're, now they're coming back around and saying, oh, it was kind of a flu, you know, it's kind of a bad <laughs> flu. So it's really interesting that to me, we should be able to explore and question. And when things get politicized, they have this absolute you absolutely mm. must wear a mask everywhere or you must absolutely not because if you're wearing a mask, you're, you're a liberal and you're wrong. You know, that was crazy that it went that way. It was absolutely crazy that it went that way. And that's the matrix fighting for life and asserting itself and our opinions about things. I love the gray zone, man. I love the gray zone. About <laughs> everything, you know, I think there's there's times to wear a mask and there's times not to wear a mask. I hate wearing a mask. But I have to tell you, I had to go get uh, blood drawn yesterday just for my checkup I have this week at the Western Medicine Doctor. And <laughs> I drove up and it was like flu screening here in the clinic. And I was like, you know what? I'm happy I have to wear a mask here today. because I don't. <laughs> you know, everyone that thinks they have a, the flu is here right now. And I don't want to be in the middle of all that. So, yeah, I put my mask on. There was probably some fear there. But, you know, it was OK. It's We're, we're living in the matrix it's okay. I, I think when we get ourselves out of whack is when we go down the fear and judgment rabbit hole. You know, there's discerning preference. And my preference in the moment was putting in a mask, putting on a mask. It wasn't a political statement. It was A, required to go into the building because we still have that in California. I don't know about everywhere else. And B, yeah, there's a whole bunch of people here with the flu. So cool. I'll put on a mask. No big deal. You know, and that for me, it, wasn't a, it was an experience. I, I, I was watching, uh, my wife and I were watching I don't even remember what the program was. Some some personality traveling in Italy doing food. I don't even know what the show was, but he and his his contact that he was talking to in one of the Italian towns uh, were driving in a car, and as they're talking, they're wearing masks in the car, and then they get out of the car and they're walking around and they're still wearing masks, and then they go inside of her house and they take the masks off. I was like, wait a minute, what, what, what was going on? What happened to the fear where, where the masks were concerned? It, went, it suddenly disappeared when you went, went inside the house? So, I mean, that's the kind of thing that I, I see. Now, my wife was watching the same program, and she didn't even notice that part at all. She was just hearing the conversation going on. So I realized I have this perspective going on in my head that other people aren't experiencing. This perspective of, this is a really funny thing going on with all this mask stuff. Nobody else yeah. is experiencing it in my life that way. Well, for a lot of people, it's just become normalized now to see. And, and now it's it's moving back to sort of the way pre-pandemic where it's odd to see masks. We went into a retail store over the weekend and people were in there with masks on. And it's 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 kind of becoming odd to see it now. I'm to each mm -hmm. his own. You know, if you want to wear a mask, yeah. knock yourself out yeah, and wear sure. a mask. I don't think it's political, uh, but I don't enjoy wearing one unless I absolutely think that I'm in danger of breathing something or spreading something, you know. Um so everybody has their own experience with it, really. I, I think where we get ourselves tripped up is in the fear and judgment, the, the matrix vibe. Oh, yeah. yeah. You shouldn't or you should or, you know, any of that stuff. That's that's not what Ty is about for sure. 
Yeah, I have to admit, I, I start, sh start shying away anytime I see words like should, righteous, yeah. truth. <laughs> but but yeah. trusting angels. Truth is a good okay, one, right? I'm, yeah, right. <laughs> when someone labels something truth, you know a lie is probably about to fall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all different versions of truth. It stands on its own without having to label it as such, yeah. What what are you seeing, Sam? Are you are you what kind of patterns are you seeing with with mask wearing in your your neck of the woods there in Ohio? It's I'm not seeing that much of it nowadays, but definitely like at the beginning of the pandemic, it's kind of like you were describing. You're very polarized, like either like why aren't you wearing a mask or no mm -hmm. way I'm gonna wear a mask. It's like. Yeah. And I was kind of fascinated, like that started before I was entirely even then I'm like, how is this a divisive political issue? <laughs> but to each their own, exactly. Yeah, we managed yeah. to do it though, didn't we? In the polarized, <laughs> right. polarized world, we managed Good for to us all. See, somebody threw down the gauntlet and said, I bet you can't turn that into a political issue. They said, Oh yeah, watch me. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, hold my beer. <laughs> so we haven't done any uh, stream sessions in a while either, because you haven't been on the program. So I want to Make sure we, we get one of those in today. And anybody listening on the live stream, you'll be able to have the opportunity to uh, ask the stream questions uh, when we get to that. Um, but before we do that, is there anything that you can tell us about, David, about what's going on in, in Thai community? Because like I said, I haven't really been paying much attention. And I, I'm sure that's probably true for, for many listeners. What, anything interesting going on these days? Yeah, we're, we're always evolving the practice. The four pillars of Taya are the four pillars that will always be uh, I would say the most exciting things is uh, the Taya book is finished. I rewrote it uh, this year and it's uh, the editing part of it is finished. So we're getting closer to actually publishing it. This is the uh, one you were doing with Kat Wanders, right? Yeah, we've been doing it for four years. Plus. Yeah, well, yeah, I know that. Yeah, well, yeah we've been a long time to write it. And now it's fully fleshed out and really ready for prime time. I rewrote the whole thing because the whole teaching of the Matrix for me sort of closed the loop on the whole practice. The, the practice is complete, although we'll always be adding tools. So the other thing is, is that we've added a new tool. And for those of you that have taken any of our master classes or, or any of those things, or you've just been to our YouTube channel, there we, we talk about the virtual vibrational spiral. And anyone that's into law of attraction is probably aware of vibration and vibrational levels and all that sort of thing. And we've, we've created a numeric measurement of vibration. Oh. This, is a, this is something that we created as a tool. And the top of the spiral is positive 20 and the bottom of the spiral is negative 20. And then you have all these various vibrations in between. And we are finding that it really helps people understand vibration and source connection and source allowing or allowing in general. All of that is, uh, it seems better understood with this numeric system. People understand now that a positive five vibration is co-creation between ego and source, where a negative five vibration is more ego and less source. But it's sort of like if you took two triangles and you had a, a triangle that started out small and you know enlarged on the way up and, and the top of the triangle, the largest part was source. And then you took the other triangle and inverted it and the smallest part was at the top and the, the largest part of the triangle, and I'm sure there are names for these things that are escaping me, <laughs> uh, at the bottom is, is ego. That's how vibration really works. So when your vibe is up, you're allowing more source and less ego. When your vibe is down, you're allowing more ego and less source. And everything that isn't source is polarized. So your ego is polarized. So ego is not necessarily a bad thing, but it diminishes as you go up your spiral. And you can get all the way up into super high vibrational territory where you're beyond wanting anything and needing anything. Uh, and most law of attraction circles are really in what I would call the lower high vibration of desiring things mm -hmm. and, and allowing by co-creating with source. It's still a high vibration. There's nothing wrong with any vibration, but it's still, uh, you know, I, where's my stuff? I want to talk to the stream or I want to talk to Abraham because I want to manifest my stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of a, that's like a positive five, positive 10 vibration where the Taya masters and myself, we've worked into this positive 15, positive 20 space, which is really interesting, but kind of boring. <laughs> That's a good description. I like that. You, you, get, uh, you get so high in source allowing that you just don't care about manifesting anything anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's a magical place because abundance is assured, especially at that vibration, because the universe is, is, is delivering abundance all the time. Our ego is the thing that separates us from that. So we have the human journey. 
And when you get your vibration up there and you're feeling so enlightened and so joyful and so just knowing and understanding and appreciative of all that is, you just don't want anything anymore. And I got myself up there this year for a while and then I consciously decided maybe I don't want to be up here so much, you know, maybe I want to be down in humanity mm. a little more. And we have double Sam's. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have the Sam page bookends. I love it. <laughs> I want to be in co that co-creative space of positive five, positive 10, because I think if you get yourself up to positive 20 and you hover there, you probably meet your demise in physical because there's no purpose of being physical anymore. And I, I feel like I was kind of heading there. It was a really interesting experience. But now I'm sort of like, let's bring it down a notch or two. You know, let's get down to negative to positive five, positive 10. And most of humanity is operating at negative five. Mm. Negative five is the matrix. And certainly there are members of humanity that operate as a default lower than that even. But, sure. you know, if you are dutifully working at a job because you're supposed to and paying your bills because you're supposed to and in a relationship because you're expected to and you feel that anxiety is sort of your normal vibration, that's negative five and you're dipping into negative 10 sometimes. And most of humanity operates there. That's, mm -hmm. that's the purpose of the matrix uh, is to keep you. And I, I labeled negative five compliancy, not complacency, but compliancy where mm -hmm. you're complying with the matrix, you're doing what humanity tells you you're supposed to do. And it doesn't always feel good. It doesn't feel <laughs> bad. Sam's doing really this great bad. robotic thing. I don't, I don't know if you saw that, but while you were describing this, he's doing this robotic thing here to, to mimic what you're, what you're talking about. Perfect. Yeah, it's a sign language <laughs> version. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Taya version of sign language is what he's saying. That's talking. right. But anyway, so I just, it, it, I encourage everybody, you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, it's on the YouTube channel. We go to the YouTube channel. It's a 21 minute training that shows you this numeric system. And it seems to be very helpful for people to understand that they're, where their default is, mm -hmm. you know, where your life is, is a sign of where your default is. And if you're anxious, if you're in anxiety, or if you have a lot of major elements that aren't really what you want them to be, you're probably at negative five and negative five is not terribly uh, uncomfortable. You know, negative 15 is uncomfortable. Negative 20 is despair. Yeah. So, you know, most people operate at negative five, a little, little anxious, uh, kind of getting through life, getting it done. Um, and it's, it's, it's what most of humanity runs on. And what we're all about is let's get you above negative five. Let's get you above neutral. Let's get you up into the positive numbers and life changes dramatically when you get yourself up there. It's funny that you were mentioning this about what it's like to be in the uh, positive 15 to positive 20 range. How, you, you, how did you say that, that you really didn't care a whole lot about stuff that was going on? I, that well, you're just, you're pissed it. out. You know, you're appreciative yeah. of all that is. You don't need anything. You know, mm -hmm. the material stuff doesn't matter there at all in that space. It's very blissful and it's, it's lovely, but you're just, you're in such deep appreciation that even mm -hmm. your obstacles that, that pass through are met in joy and appreciation and really just solve themselves. And it sounds wonderful. But it's, it's, it's just not very expansive space. We didn't come here to just be beings of source. We came here to be source beings having a human experience, which is ego-driven. And the ego-driven experience is what sort of bats us all over the place. So Taya is, is more and more evolving into the perfection of imperfection. You know, it's not about, you know, come take my course and learn how to be a millionaire and have all the yeah. shiny things you want and all that, you know, all of that. Sort of, it's never been about that. But it's really moving further and further away from, you know, those types of thoughts. But at the same time, not wanting to go so high out there that we don't get to be humans. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. okay to want stuff. It's okay to want to have experiences. Just don't think that that's going to, that that's not really expansion. Yeah. The, the getting there might be expansive, but that's not really, the, the matrix tells us that that's expansion, but it's not. Right. Yeah. Well, the reason I even mentioned it is uh, just today. I, I can't say I was I wasn't uh, flying that high. I wasn't in that high bliss territory, but I was kind of like in the five plus five to plus ten area, maybe a little over plus ten. And I had reached a point where I, I have like two important projects going on right now and it was nothing to do on them. 
and I also have a minor thing, you know, the, the business going on, and there was really nothing to do on that. And I was faced with an unusual quandary. I had no idea what to do. It was just, yeah. I, I did, there, was, there was no bad feeling. Yeah, it, it was it's like, kind of like, okay, I'm up here. Everything's perfect. Yeah, Everything's perfect. Right 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Uh, and, and we, uh, I talked about that um, this morning. I was teaching where in the class where Sam was, and I was used Adam Levine as an example. If mm. you follow pop culture, you know who Adam Levine is or is or was the lead singer of Maroon Five. I think they're still together. And uh, Charm Life, you know, good looking, talented, yeah. mega rich, mega famous. Everyone loves Adam Levine. Uh, right. And now all these DMs that he's been sending all these other women, you know, allegedly, you know, cheating on his wife, you know, are coming mm. out. And some of these things are really embarrassing. So that's, I, I just use that as a current day example of someone who has life so dialed in materially that they have to find a way to disrupt it, to create contrast for themselves, yeah. to create mm -hmm. an experience. Yeah. So, right. And yeah. I, I was experiencing that in a sense today. I mean, I, I wasn't allowing myself to go down any of those rabbit holes, but I could feel the pull like, okay, you don't have anything else to do. Why don't you go look at the news or why don't you go <laughs> check out what's going happening with the Ukraine war or something like that? And I'm thinking, whoa, what's going or go on? Go DM yeah. some, some girls on Instagram. No, while you're yeah, watching. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Very interesting stuff. Yeah. Guess that shows it yeah we been all <laughs> What was that, Sam? The, I guess that shows it could have been more swallowed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, sure. It worse, but, but of course, it also comes down to how am I going to perceive it? And, and right. I, I wasn't perceiving any of it as being bad. It was just like, I just don't really want to go there. You can, when you get into the practice, you can absolutely pay attention to current events. You don't yeah. have to go put your head in the sand and pretend like, you know, humanity isn't happening. It is. Right. Yeah. But the way I look at it is there's always far more positive than negative. And yes, there are people suffering in the world. And yes, it, it is a point of attraction and one that they may not even understand, but I can appreciate their suffering. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's when people look at you like you have horns sprouting out of exactly. your Exactly. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. yeah. Appreciation yeah. isn't celebration. Appreciation is deep understanding. Right. That you're having a, a suffering journey somehow. And yeah. the, the soul wants to have the full human journey without judgment. That's the thing is the energetic realm is not judging good and bad the way humanity judges good and bad. So, so let, let's address a, a point here that I think is really interesting. Oh, and we will get to the stream. We, we will get there, but I want I'm to just trying to get some questions stream. flowing for the stream because I know. Yeah. This stuff. <laughs> oh, it's, it's going to work great. Let me tell you. No, the yeah. thing I want to ask you about is let's talk for a moment about what the similarities and differences are between appreciation and compassion particularly in the in the arena you just described we can have that appreciation for the pain that, that's going that people are going through but some people would say yeah what about having compassion for them so how would you answer that I, well, there's nothing wrong if there's no judgment there's what would be wrong with having compassion you can have compassion yeah. but when that compassion turns into all of that fear and judgment vibration mm -hmm. then you're adding to it you're adding energy to it you're yeah. fueling it so the appreciation is a higher vibration than compassion because compassion has judgment laced into it. They shouldn't be experiencing that. Hmm. And the stream will say, who says they shouldn't be experiencing it? They are experiencing it. It may be something that sparks fear and judgment, but it is the experience they're in and it's the experience that their soul came to have and everyone on some level suffers we all you know, suffering is built into polarity but the suffering is in the judgment of the experience mm -hmm. and the deeper judgment of the experience and the going deeper into the fear of the experience draws you deeper into it and then you right. find right. yourself in the path of mass calamity mm -hmm. sometimes and that's the thing that the stream gets into that a lot of us don't really understand is, you know, well, what about a plane crash? You know, all 250 people on a plane, we're all vibing with demise. Well, yeah, they were. And they all, you know, orchestrated the, the universe as a way of orchestrating events to get us in alignment with being in that scenario. But source isn't judging the plane crash is bad. Yes, we do, because we look at our humanity as all that is source is saying there are eternal souls that are that are completing their very temporary human journey in this way, and there's nothing wrong with it. 
And so and, Taya. And, and there's really nothing wrong with the judgment either. People. There's really nothing wrong with the judgment either. The, the point, I think, with the judgment yeah. is, do you really want to go there? I mean, it's, it's understanding what, what the, the experience is, what the consequences are, if you will, if you decide to go down the judgment path. I think that's what, what yeah. the real value of the streams teaching is understanding that yeah, well, that's i don't want to be in a plane crash a i don't want any yeah. of you to be in a plane crash you know i don't yeah. want that to happen for anyone that's compassion not wanting you know not wanting anyone to right. suffer it's normal for us not to want to suffer or want anyone to suffer but the demonization of things mm-hmm. and things like things like natural disasters and plane and, and things like that there's not as much demonization there as war and things that are more thought out and and, and directly created but yep. the demonization fuels, and we yep. see that. The things that we mass demonize, like school shootings and things like that, keep happening again and again mm-hmm. and again because we are all adding to that vibration with, with the focus on it and the demonization of it. How nice to know how to avoid to do that, doing that so that you're not contributing to it anymore. That's, that's, yeah, that's, it's just, it really is taking yeah. a higher perspective of appreciation on everything and we know in our personal lives that that higher perspective of appreciation detunes the transgressor energy for us. Mm-hmm. So it really is more about your internal work and your internal uh, healing than anything else. How you feel about a plane crash or a school shooting, if you're not directly involved in it, that's just you and your thoughts and, and how right. you think of it. The, the How you think of your childhood abuse or your illness or your you know being cheated on or whatever it is that's causing your suffering that's where the magic of all of this really comes in for your personal mm-hmm. journey because mm-hmm. it allows the transformation of those events to move from something of an abundance block to something of appreciation that you actually expand in which is lovely so i think we've uh, laid out some interesting topics to ask the stream about let's bring the stream in and uh, get their perspective and <coughs> we'll, we'll revisit with you after we're done Okay. All right. Sam, you got a question lined up? I'm just curious. A couple, possibly, yeah. You do? Okay, good. Good. I like that. Mm-hmm. And anybody who's listening in on the live stream, by all means, feel free to plug them into the, the, the chat column there, and we will make sure that the stream gets asked. We are here. Hello, stream, our old friend. It's great to talk with you again, to kind of restore what Simon and Garfunkel said. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Very grateful. Yes, we definitely appreciate you. And uh, we're certain that you're aware of the conversation we were just having with David. So we're going to start off by asking you to elaborate on how would you describe uh, appreciation and compassion and how similar they are and how different they are. Uh, appreciation is the the very best word within David's vocabulary to explain having such a deep understanding of anything that you no longer choose to judge it. In fact, you understand it so deeply that you no longer can judge it. that that vibration we are using the word appreciation to describe that vibration the the compassion vibration very often is is utilized in such a way that it includes elements of judgment meaning that when you are having compassion for someone there is sometimes a vibration present not always but sometimes a vibration present of your judgment as what you are being compassionate about should not have occurred or should not be and what you are not acknowledging is that beyond the 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 ego the the human operating system that, that you are interacting with or witnessing in, in the being that, that you are compassionate about or toward, there is a source being, there's an eternal being there that, that, that is very much desiring and not even really desiring because the, 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 the idea of desire is not acknowledging that the expansive journey of of being a human is is not guaranteed it is so the 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 desire of source 
to express itself in physical is not really a desire. It's a guarantee because that's why physical exists. But we will use the word desire. The, the desire or need for that, for that expansion that is offered, that is, that is why you're here. That is why you come to physical. Your soul is choosing to manifest in physical to have an expansive journey. Your expansive journey is manifested via your collection of experiences that you create for yourself. And you create all of them. Even the ones that you do not want and certainly the ones that you do not understand are still your vibrational creation just by the fact of being human. Not because you deserve them or, or desire them or are paying some retribution for previous experiences or anything of that nature. Humanity has spent a great deal of time and effort trying to understand itself. And in that trying to understand itself, you have all asked the question, why? Why do we suffer? Why do bad things happen? Why do we have these challenges? The, the answer to that question is your challenges are, are something that you create for yourselves to then move on and create the experiencing of them and the ultimate solving of them and expanding your being eternally in the solving of them. So if you weren't in a polarized environment, you wouldn't want for anything. Because in your non-physical state of being, you, you truly want for nothing. You, you, you were operating, as, as David was referencing at the positive 20, all the time. Because there is zero ego present. So you are blissed out. You are in a state of deep appreciation. And, and, and if you want to use the term love of all that is, you are there all the time. And while you're in your physical journey, you may dream of something like that and say, and, and very often humans do, that you can't wait for this to be over with so that you can return to whatever is that you believe is perfection. But there's no real perfection because there is no expansion in, in that space, there is no expansion of consciousness because how is your consciousness going to expand being blissed out and appreciative and non-judgmental of all that is all the time? You achieve that in projecting into physical environments where you have two things going on. You have things that you appreciate and want to experience in a physical way, which you cannot do in non-physical very much. Understand that in your physical journey, the things that, that are physical that you enjoy, the sights, the sounds, the feelings, the emotions, the, the physical pleasure, all of those things do not exist in the energetic realm. You, you, you are of, of mind only in the energetic realm. The, the, the physical vehicle, notice how the physical vehicle delivers through your senses the physical experience. That doesn't exist in the energetic realm. That's a physical thing. So you want very much to experience an environment and everything that it has to offer in a physical way. But you also want to experience the challenges of the environment. That's why you have polarity or duality or however you wish to refer to it. That, that polarity is taking you on this magnificent vibrational journey of both wanted and unwanted things. And the unwanted things are your motivators to, from which to create. So you have something that, that is unwanted in your path and you can judge it and you can suffer in it and you can have it re reoccur for yourselves throughout an entire lifetime if you choose. Or you, you can have it go on long enough to where you finally get fed up and find a solution of some sort. Or you can meet it in appreciation and find a solution for it instantaneously, which is the universal process of creation. All of it is, but creation at its finest, if you will, it's when you learn to at last meet your obstacles in joy. Look back at, at your animals and your plants and the other beings on your planet and understand that while your heightened intelligence has allowed you to move yourselves out of the food chain and create technologies that the other beings do not create, there's duality in that as well. It also creates more suffering for you because you are judging your journey on a far different level than the in-the-moment judgment that the animals and other beings are, are exhibiting. So that judgment is creating suffering. And that suffering experience is, is part of what creates the human journey. But long suffering also creates great expansion. So you are catapulting yourselves as beings through your suffering to higher and higher levels of consciousness. 
And those higher and higher levels of consciousness are what exactly what is expanding that which you call source, which is what you all are and exactly what we are. Mike in the live stream uh, asked a couple of questions that are tagging on, or they're, they're basically uh, put, putting the tail on what you just described uh, quite beautifully. So let's bring them in. He's, he says, how do we go about changing our experiences if we want to increase our experiences? The, the changing of experiences is, is always going to, to manifest itself in you shifting some elements of your reality that forces a shift in your vibration. So you, you all you all hum along in, in, in this developed vibration that you've all created for yourselves. That's why your lives tend to be repetitive day after day after day and shift slowly over time. It gives you this, this sort of known journey. But it's a journey nonetheless because you do age through your experience and the aging process is designed to create disruptions to your journey. You can create some disruption to your journey in a positive way, if you would, from, from that perspective, and simply taking a risk and, and doing something different that's going to be disruptive to your everyday reality, moving to a new city, shifting relationships, changing something about your, your physical vehicle, quitting your job and, 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 and taking on something else. Something of that nature can be very disruptive if you want to start, if you want something that's sort of abrupt and the way that you're going to change your vibrational journey. Changing your mindset first is where we guide you because mindset is creating your reality. And you can change your lives dramatically but simply by shifting your mindset. And it will take a little more time for the conditions around you to, to catch up and begin populating to your new expectations and your new mindset. But that that vibrational journey of shifting and opening up your mindset and systematically raising your vibration will do more to ultimately shift your reality than any abrupt change will. Because very often abrupt change, well, you, you'll, you'll find yourself very often pulled right back into the old vibration. And sooner or later, the old circumstances and events are, are beginning to populate this new disrupted reality that you've created for yourself. So a gradual mindset shift that happens over time, but systematically is going to do more for you in terms of expansion than these disruptive shifts. But, but it's up to you to decide and discern your preference what to do. For a full, rich life experience, we would guide you to try all of it. That's really good. And, and that's also very consistent with uh, what has been going on here on the podcast for the last few months. It seems like every single guest who has come onto the show has agreed, yes, the most important thing you have to do in order to make whatever kind of change you, that they're they're promoting, I, I, I can help you get to this particular place, whatever that place is, it always starts with mindset. And they all agree, mindset's there. So it's, it's certainly apropos stream that you're talking about mindset as being the thing that you can change. It's also great reinforcement because now everybody is agreeing on the same thing. Yes, mindset is what it's all about. Mindset is where the change has to take place. Mindset is where you want to give your attention if you want to really change your life for the better. No, I love that. I love the consistency. Your, your mindset is your human operating system, just like your devices mm -hmm. operate on an operating system. Every single physical being and absolutely every human being operates in a belief system, your mindset. That is your operating system for your life. And you can shift it. You created it. Therefore, you have the power to, to update it, upgrade it, evolve it, shift it, do whatever you want with it. Which, of course, is what the tire practice is all about. We, we can, offer a framework that gives you the tools to do that without, yeah. without delivering what that mindset specifically should be. Mm. Because that's your creation. Right. Sam, Sam you mentioned that you had a question or two. What do you have in mind for the stream today? For sure. I have a couple kind of completely different ones, but this might be in a closer vein. Um, and so I, one of my favorite things I've heard from this team stream in the time that I've been following them is very simple, but very effective from my perspective is just that to, for humanity to love themselves more. But I remember saying something to that effect to friends and they have um, trouble doing that. So I did, and I feel like there, I do know several people who might have just trouble finding love for themselves. So I, I'm wondering if maybe you can speak more on that or give guidance to those who may be having trouble loving themselves. Good question. 
Uh, understand that that in, in when you speak of loving yourselves, the challenge very often is ca- being caught up in the in the commercial version of, of love, the matrix version of love. What do you love? Do you do you love something because it's beautiful or cute, or or paying attention to you? That's all ego. Or are you loving something unconditionally and you're deepening understanding of it, i.e. authentic appreciation? So where we would guide all of humanity is to think in terms of authentic appreciation of yourselves as eternal beings that came to be imperfect and have an imperfect journey. Because that, that is how we feel about you all the time. That is source consciousness. So when you start applying that to yourselves, you are automatically raising your vibration. And if you want to attract more positive things in your lives, the path to that is via the system of your vibration, where your default vibration goes higher and higher and higher. And you, you begin to not only... The, 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 the reason that the higher vibration attracts more of your desires is because you need them less in the higher vibration. You need them mm-hmm. The, the, the number one thing, and, and you are all about quantification, we are not, but we understand it, to speak to you in these terms. The number one thing that chases away your desires, the things that you want most, is, is your focus upon them in need. The things that you believe that you need to be happy, you are thinking about all the time. And what you are activating is the vibration of it's not here. And in, by, in activating that vibration of need, the it's not here vibration, the universe is always agreeing with you. <laughs> You're right. You need Quite it. Quite annoyingly. <laughs> it's not here. You're right. It's absent. You're right. You need that to be happy. Whatever you say, the universe is always, whatever you vibrate, the universe is always answering yes to that. Always, always, always. And when you start thinking that, manifesting certain things is going to suddenly make you happy or make you a worthy being and allow you to love yourselves more. You're placing all of these conditions that are so incongruent with the way the energetic realm operates. The energetic realm is all appreciation of all things all the time. So when you're vibrating at anything less than appreciation, you are lowering your vibration more into your ego center. And the more ego centered you are, the more swept up in the matrix you are. And humanity has created this matrix of control for humanity, an operating system for humanity. And notice how your operating systems tend to function. Fear, judgment, consequence. If you don't do this, this bad thing is going to happen to you. And and that gets everyone's attention and gets everybody marching sort of to the same drum in in this little matrix of reality that, that you all operate in. But humanity is wising up to that. That, that's what's creating the disruptive nature that you see manifesting across your planet right now. That humanity is waking up and, and looking back at, at things like government and religion and monarchy and policing and the medical industry, all of these things, and questioning all of it and, and wondering how much of it do you really need? Mm-hmm. And why are they trying to scare us so much? Why am I being fed so much fear? Why am I being told that if I don't do X, Y, Z, something bad is going to happen or I'm not going to be as worthy or I'm not going to have the good life that this person over here is having? That's your matrix. And the more you systematically appreciate yourselves, love yourselves exactly as you are, we, we are the source of all creation. You are part of us. We love you no matter what. No matter what. No matter what your bank account looks like, no matter what you, no matter what you see in the mirror, no matter how you're comparing yourself to what the matrix tells you you're supposed to be, you're simply operating a physical vehicle, and there's nothing wrong with any physical vehicle, any, any, regardless of what the matrix tells you, there is not. So when you stop all of that judgment of self, and sometimes it's easier to stop the external judgment first. You start healing and curing and and, and catching yourselves when you're judging others and turn that judgment to appreciation. Sooner or later, that vibration bleeds into how you feel about you and you start appreciating yourselves more. And when you start appreciating yourselves more, your, your default vibration goes up. Your default vibration goes up. You're not needing all of those external things to feel worthy anymore. And then they flow right in.
It's beautiful. It definitely makes sense too, just because judgment does lower one's vibration <laughs> either way. Um, and the other question I had thought of was kind of a departure from what we were just discussing, but I was wondering, I, I followed the stream and um, the Thai teachings and talk, and there's been some talk about just how like the matrix idea of time is an illusion, like the linearity of it and how it's more like, I don't know, my understanding could be some development. So that's kind of the question in itself, but like, I kind of understand it's like, things are all happening at the same time, but I'm wondering if the stream could elaborate more on that or clarify that a bit. <laughs> it, it, it's easier to think in terms of the only thing that really exists is your right now moment. Mm. That's all that exists. Everything that ever existed before that moment only exists in your mind, in consciousness, your memory. And everything that exists in the future also exists there in your mind and consciousness and in, in your memory, your memory of, of what you're projecting into the future, what you're dreaming about, what you're frightened about. You are creating that in your mind. So instead of thinking of moving through life in, in linear or trying to, to bend your human mind in, in this linear reality to something that is completely stacked eternally, which is, is how a scientist would would in a very basic way, describe time, the, the non-existence of time, think of it in terms of everything is consciousness, everything is thought. And the only reality is where you are experiencing in your right now moment. Yeah, that makes sense to me as well. I appreciate that clarifies a lot as well. So. Thank you. And, and two, with that, <clears throat> understand that that your recollection, you, you, the way you are experiencing your life in the earth environment is all a matter of your own perspective. Th this is why one being can go on a vacation to a place and absolutely love it. And another being can go on a vacation to the same place and despise it and have a horrible time. It, your perspective is creating your reality. So your perspective of your past is creating your past. And your perspective of the future is creating your future. And you will see in your now moment, the actual 3D physical things around you, including your own physical vehicle, populate to meet the expectations of, of what your experience is going to be in every next moment. But it's very much dictated by your belief system. And the reason that you have a belief system is, is because if you don't have a point of reference to sort of mentally recreate your reality over and over and over again throughout an entire physical journey, then you're going to be so disrupted and you're bouncing around from reality to reality that you don't have the linear journey from which to expand. If you could suddenly snap your fingers and be a different being in a different country with a whole different experience, it would be really cool from a sci-fi perspective, but from an expansion of consciousness perspective, it wouldn't offer you anything because where your expansion is coming from is in your journey as Sam Page. True enough, yeah. How interesting, too, that uh, what you're really talking about there is the value of the, the time illusion, that, that the, the time illusion actually creates the expansion. So it may be an illusion, but it's a valuable illusion. The, the experience of, of day to day to day of I was this way yesterday and I wish to be this way, another way tomorrow, I wish to experience something different. That is the, the consciousness creation of your reality that creates the expansion of your being. You, your soul is here to become an ever expanding, i.e. more sophisticated version of itself. That's why you come to physical. That's the only reason you come to physical. So think about the elements of physical that create that expansion of consciousness prolonged suffering, solving problems, learning new things, shifting the, your, the, the way that you operate your life journey, changing localities, changing careers, taking classes, learning from other people, exploring spirituality. All of these things expand your consciousness. And the more you zoom out to the source perspective of appreciation of all that is, the more able you are to observe another who you, whom you used to judge as wrong or should not be or less than or considered less than by others than yourself or whatever it is and have such appreciation for them that you are then in alignment with them 
and absorbing some of their energy in a positive way and as opposed to lowering your vibration and judgment and not not receiving the bounty that is available in the observation of something that's different than you that expands your consciousness. Look at all of the judgment that happens in, 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 in your polarized world. Those that are really steeped in polarity, battling it out. I'm right. You're wrong. My side is the right side. Your side is the wrong side with zero attempt to understand the other side. Mm -hmm. How is that being expanding its consciousness in that judgment and demonization of the perceived enemy, there's very little expansion offered there. The, the only thing that's happening there is the expansion that is inevitable is occurring in that external judgment being inevitably turned inward in that suffering journey, there's expansion there. Because all of that anger and vitriol is creating some expansion, but in, in through suffering way, as opposed to the greater degree of expansion that is that is derived in the appreciation of the one that is different. It's a very interesting point because I think we do get kind of we, we get <clears throat> excuse me we get hung up on the things that we we become very truthful and righteous about, and we also tend to learn the least from those situations. But they do nevertheless serve a role. They do serve a role of helping us to in a sense be guided toward what you were just talking about switching the whole thing around uh it, it, like you said it, it, you kind of go inside with it um it turns to suffering of, of, of some kind and if you continue down that path long enough and and come out the other end the other end is where the pre the appreciation starts very often people don't go that far they stop before they get that far but that's where the path is going toward which is a very interesting thing. In other words, what, what the thing I'm identifying as interesting right now is we tend to demonize judgment. We tend to demonize bad experiences. We tend to demonize people who don't think the way we do. We don't. We tend to demonize things that we don't like. And yet, that demonization, if we follow it through, this, this, this is something that would drive a lot of people crazy. If we follow it through to the end, it actually takes us to a place of appreciative expansion. That's really odd. <laughs> it's, it's inevitable. Your return to source is inevitable, you, whether it's through the transition to non-physical experience or before that on some level. You, mm -hmm. you, you are going to end up returning to your source being no matter what. Mm -hmm. that, that is why we say that even the ones that are steeped in the matrix, spending a lifetime judging and fearing, are expanding in that process. No matter what, there's expansion offered in the journey. When, when you are, to, yeah. to put it in, in linear human terms, when you're no longer in physical and you're in your non-physical state, which is an all-knowing, all-being, all-seeing state, because you're part of source, you can look upon whatever was experienced in a lifetime in great appreciation for exactly this experience that was had. That was the, so you, you, you think of yourselves as, as infinite beings because you are, and if you are, are speaking to infinity and, and you are looking at infinite lifetimes, and you all are, you, you, you never end this expressing yourselves in physical. The, 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 the idea that you live so many lives and you become so enlightened in a lifetime and, and that you're done living lives is very ego-centered. That, that is the human being judging the human experience, no longer wanting to be human and believing somehow that they've done enough spiritual work to be done with, with being physical. Your mm -hmm. expansion is derived from your physical journeys and you are, are, are never ending expansive beings as we are, you're part of us. But when you go into the, the energetic realm and reflect back on your lifetimes, there are going to be infinite experiences. And, and some are going to be very brief and some are going to be much longer and some are going to be expansive in, in terms of the physical journey itself. Some are going to be journeys of suffering you have all of it. You have all of it. And you are all continually expressing yourselves in, in greater degrees of sophistication. And here you are as the most sophisticated physical beings in your environment. You've done enough to get to this point, And humanity has done enough as a species to get to the point in their technology and their ability to communicate to start questioning the very matrix that, that you created to get you to that point. Essentially, you've built it, and now it's time to disrupt it or even destroy it and move on to something else. 
but still in contrast, still in a vibrational journey of that which you might consider positive and negative. But from the eternal perspective, all positive because it's all expansive. The only reason there's any suffering whatsoever is in the judgment of the experience. And you can, right now in real time, teach yourselves to stop judging the experience. David often comments that uh, we, we do relatively short stream sessions and it kind of throws them off a little bit. But unfortunately, this has to be another short one because we're limited in terms of the amount of time we have for the podcast today. So stream, I'm going to thank you once again for joining us and, and sharing your eternal wisdom. And we'll invite David back to uh, see how much he remembers. That's always a fun part. Is David going to remember any of this? <laughs> <laughs> and also to, to kind of wind things up a little bit here. But uh, what do you think, Sam? I'm curious to know what your take was. That was splendid. Loved, loved it, to put it succinctly. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of great info. We'll be listening again, for sure. I'm very grateful to have been part of it. Every time that we talk with the stream, we get new, new. Um, it's not so much new insights. The insights are, are in many ways repetitive. New ways of seeing the insights. Yeah. New ways of understanding. I can agree with insights. that, for sure, yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. today was, was uh, no exception. David, I don't know how much of that you actually remember, uh, but we were exploring very much the the exploration of all all the the judgment and the suffering and so forth, and finding the appreciation in it. That was that was a big part of the conversation mm -hmm. with the stream, and it, it was um, it was. I, I don't I remember all the interaction, video. but I, uh, I I understand their mindset. Mm, yes. <laughs> perspective, I should say, not really mindset, their perspective. Yeah, it's always a little confusing to come out of, of this. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it very is. Yeah. Awesome. But the, the, the part that I was observing toward the end that was really interesting to me is when, when we take the time to, yes, we, we, we live in this, uh, this world of contrast. We often take journeys of suffering. We take journeys of frustration, of anger, of fill in the blank, <laughs> truth, righteousness. I don't care which blank you're filling it in with. And then if we just follow through all the way to the end, we end up in appreciation. That, that was a big part of what came out of the conversation. Mm. When, you, when all is said and done, you still end up in appreciation. You may end up having to leave the physical um, experience to get there, but it always ends up there one way well, or another. You know, source is appreciation of all things. That's what source is. And so mm. we are all beings of source. The ego journey is temporary. It serves a purpose, but ultimately we do release that and return to source. So that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. And I think we can get there more and more in physical, you know, with things like Taya to, to take yourself more to that space while in physical, but we're also not here to just be there all the time without any contrast. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's all good stuff. Um, we only have a few minutes left. I want to ask you, I asked you earlier at the, the top of the, the show, uh, if there's anything interesting going on in the Thai community, are there any events coming up that people need to know about? Anything that uh, people need to put on their calendars? Uh, we do everything now. We've really kind of exited social media for the most part. We put things mm -hmm. out on social media here and there. Uh, but we have a Patreon community now. So you can mm -hmm. come and partake in the stream of David uh, and support the message at whatever level you want to be at uh, in Patreon. And there's a free feed and then there's a $10 a month uh, expanded podcast feed. Uh, there's a $25 a month uh event feed. So anything that we do event wise, unless we do something special like a retreat, which we're not doing any more of those this year, um, that would be on Patreon. So you, mm -hmm. can, you can subscribe and, and catch all of the lives. Uh, gosh, I'm on at least three times a week, Wednesday morning, mm -hmm. Thursday evening, Sunday morning with Sunday Soul Food. Uh, you can catch all that in the Patreon feed. So that's really cool. You can subscribe and get all of that. And it, it's, if you go to uh, patreon.com forward slash the stream of David or search uh, the stream of David on there, you can see the community and uh, all the different levels that you can subscribe to. Everything is in there now. The Academy is, uh, is, has moved there. Uh, boot Camp is no longer Boot Camp. It's now the Taya Experience. And it's oh, part okay. of it. Yeah, well, we, I wanted everything in one community. So that we're not doing this stuff over here and that stuff over there. And if you're in boot camp, you're off over there. Now it's all this one space. Mm -hmm. So you can get as much or as little of the stream as you want. Right, right. <laughs> right there. And it's a good place to uh, to just know everything that's going on all the time for us. And if you sign up on our website for the uh, email, uh, we don't bombard you with email, but we do send a newsletter out every Sunday 
telling you what's going on in the in the uh, Patreon community, and then any guest appearances that I do on podcasts, which I do every week, uh, we put those in there as well because those are all different depending on what the host wants. Sure. As you know. Yeah, absolutely, and I enjoy that, <laughs> and I know our listeners enjoy it as well. I also uh, I, I'm observing now that it isn't so much a uh, what's the latest event? I'm realizing I have to change my question. It's a, it's an ongoing series of events, and and trying to label it as a single event just isn't appropriate. Yeah, well, I like keeping busy, and I love sharing the stream, and I yeah. and I love doing it virtually, where the whole world, you know, the whole idea of traveling and doing retreats and stuff. I like that. We did you know one at the beginning of the year, uh, but I love being able to just reach everyone globally with the technology that we have. Mm, technology is wonderful. And so is having you visit us on the show. I'm looking forward to the next time that you uh, decide to grace us with your presence and with the stream's presence. But thank Always you so good much to be here. Thank today. you. Good seeing you again, Sam. That. Thank good you so much. You too, Sam. Sam, I'll see you again next week, of course. And Indeed. thank you very much to all who tuned in on the live stream and to all of our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.